Hello, I'm Mark. I'm Casey. And uh, I'm Patrick. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the Rivian Adventure Network and what changes are coming to it. But first, roll that title. Thanks for joining us today. What was that sound effect, Casey? Where did that come from? <laughs> uh, that was our friend Patrick doing the intro, but it's oh, uh, okay. All oh right. no, it, what happened? It kind of got messed up, and we got yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, back to that being messed up. Oh no. Back to that. Back to that. Well, today, yeah, uh, we want to talk a little bit about this article that was released uh, by Rivian. Well, uh, the information was released by Rivian, uh, where they were they were talking about how the Adventure Network, which of course is both a level uh, two and a level three uh, system, you've got different types of chargers across uh, the country. Um, they uh, are planning on, of course, adapting the NAX uh, charging head, uh, which they are going to work into their current number of locations. 67 locations across the U.S. currently um, uh, with 400 uh, DC fast chargers at those 67 locations. It's it's certainly targeting a lot more. I think it was uh, 3,500 chargers at approximately 600 sites. Uh, but uh, they've they've started they've started to roll this out. But now uh, with the adoption of NAX, um, they are going to be uh, retrofitting um, their uh, current network uh, to to have the NAX uh, charge head. So not a surprise uh, that it's coming. Um, Light on the details, which Rivian typically is. Uh, obviously, they didn't meet their goals uh, when they first came out with the uh, with the Adventure Network. Um, the number of chargers were drastically less than what they had promised for the first couple of years. And I'm not surprised, really, because they're juggling a lot of balls in the air at this point as they're trying to reduce costs. Uh, they're trying to... Uh, uh, I guess, intensify um, uh, their spend. Uh, they're, they're trying to, to keep track of it, to yeah. be more efficient uh, with Everything what they've got. On the floor. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So it's it's not a surprise that they're, they're kind of juggling this stuff. Uh, and uh, the network, uh, as per se, has, um, you know, it's, it's fallen short somewhat. But... They're still saying they're going to do this. They're still doing the rollout. They haven't changed the numbers. It's just the timetable has uh, has been changed. But uh, with the adoption of NAX uh, and, of course, the um, adapter that they have supplied uh, their customers or are in the process of supplying, you've got now the option that they can use the, the, Tesla, the Tesla network uh, to uh, charge their vehicles as well, which is got to be a huge win for anyone that currently owns a Rivian truck uh, because obviously the adventure network was not covering all of the U S certainly not near uh, all the, the highways that you'd want it to, but uh, now they can supplement that with uh, the Tesla network that of course they're paying for, but um, it uh, it's benefiting both companies. It'll allow them to, to more strategically locate these things because uh, exactly. the whole thing is, it's called the Adventure Network, and their whole brand is adventure. And and yes, that 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 doesn't necessarily mean outdoorsy, woodsy, whatever. Uh, that that is a significant portion of their customer base. Uh, but you can fill in the gaps, like this, the places that Tesla's never going to go. Uh, you can you can just put the chargers in there, and uh, now that they're open to everybody. This doesn't just help Rivian customers; this helps everybody. And and it it made sense for the the for these uh, points to go. Max once once the company had announced that the cars were going max next year. So this was, was cool to see. And then something that I had said long before Tesla had officially opened up their network and uh, when we heard about the Adventure Network was, one, the Tesla network should have been opened. It is now. Uh, and that the Rivian network should have never been closed. They should have been the bigger entity and, and then just charged us more since we weren't their customer or something to, to help offset those costs. Uh, but now they have also done the right thing. And it's good to see that both of these 
pillars of the EV community are, are not just offering charging, but also offering charging to the entire EV community. Have we seen uh, either a charging station or a car with NAX on it that wasn't Tesla yet? Uh, the cars, no, no, other than Terra. A Terra. The station, yeah, yeah. The stations, yeah. yes. We've seen charge point and prototypes, and uh, I believe there's another one that's not a, a, a prototype that uh, whichever one Kyle set his, his record for the Cybertruck on, because it wasn't actually a. a mm -hmm. A supercharger that he, he got the fastest charging on Cybertruck with. It was another Nax charger. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's. Uh, I don't. Besides Aptera, I have not seen any vehicle that's in production that has the Nax port as of yet. There are a number that are slated in 2025. Uh, yes. But and of course, we don't know what the time frame is. Could be the beginning. Most likely, it's going to be the end. But uh, there's a number of vehicles that are looking to make that transition. We don't know if that's a year, calendar year, or model year. So if it's a model year, we could see them as early as mm. uh, August of this year. That'd be nice. Yeah. It but certainly would be nice for those people buying them. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that uh, you know they're most of these are now buying into uh, an infrastructure where they're going to require an adapter uh, right. moving forward. So uh, having the native port certainly will be a, a benefit to uh, any of these other manufacturers as soon as they can get them in there. Absolutely. If it's, a, it's a calendar year. That's going to be a nightmare for anybody buying used cars the, of that of that year. Is it a 2025 and a half or is it a 2025? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, how uh, the Rivian Adventure Network uh, starts to roll these out if we start to get some photos of this uh, later this year, hopefully, mm -hmm. uh, with these new plugs. And, of course, uh, how they will implement it. Will there be uh, a two-plug system for a little while as they transition? Or will there be uh, something else that they plan to do? Uh, maybe one is CCS and one is, one is NAX. Oh. Maybe so, they'll yeah. just oscillate back and forth. I don't know. Uh, maybe there'll be a, a split head uh, uh, ability that you could remove the other one once it's no longer required. But hmm. I guess I'll, that's something we're going to see. Would they copy Magic Dot? They could. Yep. Yeah. The, I also yeah, wonder how they're going to do their layouts because the R1 has the charge board in the driver's side front bumper. And the R2 has it in the passenger side rear bumper. The, so, that was that was part of the release is that the cables are getting longer at the they are going to be longer. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So yeah, well, Frivian is looking for people with Nax experience. I've heard that there are a few available on the market <laughs> recently. And why is that, Patrick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Tesla has recently laid off a, a large chunk, if not most, of their supercharger team. So I heard it was five hundred people. Including yeah, the, the head of that department, yeah. yeah. So uh, that's that's a that's a big loss, and they have been installing stuff at breakneck speeds, and so uh, that that's that's obviously going to slow down significantly now. But those yeah. people have the skills that, that all these other companies are looking for, so I, I don't think they'll have any problem uh, getting a new gig. So uh, if if you know Rivian's doing this, and and I know all the other car companies are looking at who they're partnering with for charging. And did you see uh, Elon had responded uh, to uh, that uh, news? Uh, it's really bad to, damage control. Uh, it, it, exact, damage control is exactly right. Uh, he, was, he was indicating as to why this is going on and what that is going to mean, mean for new supercharger deployment. And as Patrick mentioned, he actually said it that uh, yes, we are going to slow down the number of new chargers that are being built. Um, but uh, they're going to work on placing the new ones in optimal locations. And two, they're going to work on expanding existing superchargers, land that they already have uh, under agreement or uh, with landowners that they could write a new agreement uh, because obviously the landowner is favorable as to how Tesla is, is operating on their uh, their properties at this time. Yeah, my response to Elon was, uh, are we going to have more tow-friendly sites? Right. <laughs> Which yeah, is a, a main concern for Casey as of now uh, because 
<laughs> if you haven't yes. heard already, uh, he's going to be uh, doing some cross country towing with uh, a mobile uh, trailer and studio with him. That's right. Yeah. And with more so, cyber trucks, you're going to see more people towing more things and they'll need yeah. to supercharge. So they should definitely be thinking about that. And Cybertruck is a is a truck, so it's going to be a lot more practical and frequent that you'll see somebody towing than than you did with Model X. Uh, and when Model X was the only one, you know, it, it was already the Fabergé egg. It was, it was just kind of the, the the odd duck in the family. But then they added towing to the Model Y, and that's that's a lot more accessible to to everybody. In fact, it's the favorite child. And uh, and then uh, Model S, I believe, got it here in the states. Uh, Model Three still doesn't officially have it in the states, last I checked, but uh, no. it does have it overseas. Yeah, so, right. Having uh, having the entire fleet able to tow outside of the U.S. and most of the fleet able to tow in the U.S. If you can make that more convenient to get people mm -hmm. in and get people out, that, that would be appreciated. Exactly. Right. And, if but, you're, and if you're towing, you are going to need to supercharge more often because you're yes. less aerodynamic. You've got more weight, and so the odds of somebody towing and needing to supercharge are right there. It's it's going to happen. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So. It'll be interesting to see how, how, the, how this all plays out, and, and hopefully these folks are able to uh, find somebody like Rivian to make better rather than somebody like uh, not nothing against BP and, and Shell. Thankfully, they are participating in, in charging, but it feels better when it's... I, I have a feeling, Casey, as we've talked about before, mm -hmm. is that some of these other legacy companies that are involved with uh, energy deployment currently, uh, petroleum at this point uh, in the, the most, is that... Uh, they're gonna. Some of them are gonna learn the hard way, and others are gonna start to pick up on this part way through and right. and uh, modify their current uh, properties to house uh, charging of some sort uh, and grow with the ideas they see uptake uh, uh, taking them up on the offer. Um, a lot of those places have great locations uh, based on freeways or accesses mm -hmm. and. Uh, Obviously, we'll those 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 are going to be ones that um, could really cash in and benefit uh, from the transition. They're open and they're willing to learn from from uh, other lessons from other people, and and the fact that you know they are the incumbent, so they they have first mover advantage on some of these things, like you said, because they they are already in you know location, location, location. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. they're humble. We can see one of them survive and be a major player, but. Uh, if they if they have any hubris about them, they're gonna they're gonna go down. They're gonna go down hard, and hopefully they don't hurt us with it because some of them are, are buying uh, straight yeah. up eight four superchargers. Well, with that, I think we'll wrap it. Uh, we'll keep our eye on the the ball as to the situation changing, and uh, we'll uh, certainly be able to uh, inform you as uh, as we see these changes on other Tesla Life uh, broadcasts. But uh, for tonight, I think we will wrap. And uh, Casey, what do you got to, to tell the crowd out there about what's coming up with you? So on Sunday at 110 Eastern, you can catch me over at youtube.com slash Casey Green or on x.com slash dcustom. We will be doing a Let's Chat with Casey Green and Friends. And we'll talk about uh, the latest in stuff like this, as well as uh, we'll get started on on the uh, the HVRV, the, uh, the High Voltage Unplugged. Uh, where we will start planning our adventure and see how it all goes. And then you can meet us back here again on Monday for another Test of Life Express at this same time. Very good. Patrick, uh, you do some writing somewhere. Let, let people know about that. I do at carswithcords.net. And I've got an article up there now that says, am I a techno-optimist? Am I an environmentalist? What is the right term? Because there isn't a perfect fit uh, for the way that, uh, for my view of the world, of moving towards a future free from fossil fuels. <laughs> Thanks. Bingo. Bingo. <laughs> With that, we will catch you guys next time on The Tesla Life. Good night, everyone.